find some way to get rid of him. Then Satan entered into Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve disciples. And he went to the chief priests to discuss the best way to betray Jesus to them. Judas walked over to Jesus and kissed him on his cheek. With a kiss, Judas, you traitor, how can you?
off Jesus' body and wrapped it in a long linen cloth and laid it in a new, unused tomb hewn into the rock. Oh, 
So when we uh, read from Luke chapter 18, verses 25 to 33, uh, 25 to uh, 43, uh, we could see, uh, sorry, 35 to 43, we could see that blind man is coming there. Uh, Jesus was towards Jericho. After he foretells about his death and the resurrection, he is suffering. He goes towards Jericho. And it so happened that on his way, there was a huge crowd following Jesus Christ. Even today, we have got many people following the leaders, the body leaders, no? during this election time. Many people are following them. And people are shouting, people are going, he is moving here and there. And because of this only, the COVID also, I mean, that's what second wave, that is increasing. But they don't want to stop that, but they don't want to close down everything, right? But here, a blind man was crying out. He was asking, who is this going ahead? Why is there so much of crowd? Why is there so much of noises? And the blind man, there was an answer from the crowd. It is Jesus who is going ahead. Then he said, why don't I call upon Jesus? So he cried, he shouted, Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. And then there were people, there were a group of people who sternly ordered him to not to speak out. They wanted to come, calm down his you know, noises. What does it really indicate? What, is it, what does it really teach us? There are many people even today, those who are willing to come out from their oppression, from their marginal situation, from the margin, from their whole a lot of uh, suppression. And there are people who really suppress them not to come out, come out of their bonded life. Not to come out of their slavery life, not to come out of their sinful nature. There are people, those who are very happy that if somebody is remaining in their own slavery, if there's somebody remaining in their own bondage, then we are happy. Now, at times the political leaders, at times even the church leaders, they try and see that some people are kept in the same way because they don't want change to happen. If these poor people are changed, if these people are liberated, if these people are freed from their captivity, and then what we have to do? And what, what to do with our own powers and positions? So here there was a group of people who sternly ordered him to not to speak out. But then again he raised his voice. Because he cried out, because he made his voice aloud, and Jesus heard his voice and then said, Who is that shouting? Can I meet him? And then they brought him towards Jesus and Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do? A simple question, what do you want me to do? You may wonder why Jesus is asking what do you want me to do? He's a blind man, obviously what he needs. He needs touching, he needs healing, he needs restoration. But Jesus asked, why, what do you want me to do? Because there are many people even still today, those who are blind, visually impaired, visually challenged, whatever you call. But then they want to beg every day and lead their life. So Jesus asked me a straight question, what do you want me to do? And he says very plainly, Lord Jesus, I want to, can anybody say? See? See? See the vision. Here is the crux. See? The vision. Again. Again. It is not I want to see, I want to see again. What does it mean? What does it indicate? What do you understand from this? I want to see again. Yes, exactly, Matthew. He was able to see before. He was already had a sight. Uh, somewhere the other way, somewhere, uh, somewhere struck, and he lost his sight. So he said, I want to see again. I want to see the colors. I want to see people. I want to see people walking. I want to go to temple and worship God. I want to see again. I want to bring back my sight. Can you help me, Lord? There are people who lived a life, a worthy life. There, were pe there are people who had a good life, but because of these political pressures and people have been suppressed. Now people are crying out, Lord, we want to come out, come again. We want to come out of the life. We want to be liberated. We want to come and see Jesus Christ. We want to see uh, the Lord Almighty. We want to worship the Lord Almighty. Can you help us? It's a challenge for all of us, my dear friends. The cross, the cross gives us a new vision, a new vision of the Messianic. What is Messianic? Uh, message here. You and I being the being the uh, being the ambassadors of Christ proclamation of Christ gospel, we have to see people, those who are being oppressed, those who once were able to uh, do all things for good and now they have been oppressed. We are here to liberate them and see the goodness of God forever and ever. So shall we come in ourselves and say, Lord, here we are, use us as ambassadors to bring change. 
the silent case. Let's pray. Grace is God and loving Father. We thank you, Lord, for this time that you have given us. Thank you, Lord, for the message that you brought us this day. Help us to liberate people, those who are under bondage, slavery, those who are depressed and oppressed, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Help us to show kindness towards them so that they'll be able to liberate it from all their afflictions and from all their slavery and from their sinful nature. Thank you, Lord. Use us for your glory. In Christ's mighty name, we pray.